we're going to move into a different world, the world of health clubs and personal training. And again, I want to just start off by sharing some statistics and research with you to set the context. So according to URSA, the International Health Racket and Sports Club Association, which is kind of the association for fitness clubs and, and um, health clubs, um, according to their statistics, the number of health club or gym memberships has increased significantly in recent years from about 41.3 million in 2005 to 50.2 million in 2012. So 10 million increase in a very short period of time. And according to the Labor Department, there were 231,000 personal trainers in America as of 2011, which is the most recent data, which is a 44% increase over the last decade. So again, a growth both in health club memberships as well as usage of personal trainers. So the question is, how can new fitness technology help health clubs and personal trainers um, compete in kind of this growing market? And how can digital technology actually extend what happens in the health club or with a personal trainer? Now, in the news, we read about clubs like Alpha Venice in California, which teamed up with Nike to open a fitness center specifically for the Nike Training Club. And so these classes, they like stream alongside the class instructors, which adds this kind of motivational element to the class. We also read about Equinox that um, uh, recently introduced spinning classes called The Pursuit that incorporates gaming and data visualization to, quote, inspire peak performance, peak individual and group performance. So you hear about these kind of leading edge clubs, but these examples seem to be outliers, right? Um, kind of on the forefront. And what about all the regular people going to regular gyms? And then what about the 82% of Americans who are not members of a health club? Um, certainly some of them are buying their own fitness equipment to use at home or doing some other kind of exercise program where they're not in a club, but they're still using um, the kinds of devices and equipment that we've been talking about. So here to kind of explore this area is uh, a panel of experts, and I am going to allow each of them to just introduce themselves and introduce their company and their products. So we'll start with you. Hi, I'm Perry Bobrow. I'm the uh, Digital Solutions Director for TechnoGym uh, here in North America. So I've got like a real pre-prepared speech here on TechnoGym. So I wrote my notes down, I apologize. I took a little fall yesterday, so this is my excuse for writing the notes, although I probably would have had it anyway. So uh, Technogen, we've been a global leader for the last 30 years um, in fitness and wellness <coughs> market, uh, we've been providing total wellness solutions for both the commercial operators as well as the consumer market. So our founder, Neri Alessandri, it's really his, it's his passion to really create a better lifestyle for everyone. One person at a time. It's really the ethos of TechnoGym is to create a better lifestyle for everyone. It's pretty amazing. So what we're doing is we're using a strategy called Wellness on the Go. And the Wellness on the Go is uh, it's really the vision that sits behind TechnoGym and our ecosystem. Uh, what it does is it allows people to be able to access their information, access training programs anywhere they are on any piece of equipment. Uh, by, by integrating uh, personal devices like, I don't know, like a watch or a TechnoGym key or a mobile app, uh, integrating all this information, allowing the consumers to access it. And then, of course, what we're really talking about today is how personal trainers and gyms are really using that information. It allows them to manage their person, their people, anywhere they are. Like when you're talking about your thing here be able to access that information, whether they're on-site or off-site. Um, and that's really the basis behind the TechnoGym ecosystem. Great. OK. Anthony, Life Fitness. So my name is Anthony Morelli. I am our senior product manager at Life Fitness. And I oversee our product development for our commercial cardio division. So for those that are unfamiliar with Life Fitness, Life Fitness is the largest manufacturer of commercial fitness equipment in the world. Uh, we are sold in over 120 different countries around the world. Um, and have distribution in all these areas as well. So Life Fitness has been exploring uh, different avenues over the last several years and really going from a manufacturing company into more of a technology company and exploring different integrations with third parties 
And ultimately, what that's allowing us to do is to focus on our core competencies and building the best fitness products that we can and leverage all these third-party solutions that we know people are wearing and bringing to the gym to really put the experience and the ownership on the exerciser to allow them to, to utilize what they are most comfortable with as they work out on a regular basis. Great. Philo? Hi, I'm Philo Northrup, uh, co-founder of Tau Wellness, and I'm sort of an outlier on this panel. Uh, focusing on the 82% that really don't have a gym membership or have one but aren't going. We have two products and they're really both focused on combating what is what are the, one of the real uh, uh, ill effects today, one of the things that's really uh, against health and that's sitting. We sit too much. So we have um, our mobile exercise device that allows you to actually exercise anywhere on the plane or at the office or during a work break and things like that. And then we have a new product that we're showing at our booth, a prototype that's called the Tau Chair, that we call the invisible gym in your living room, uh, which allows you to have a nice stylish chair that you can actually do exercises with, uh, but doesn't interrupt what else is going on in the living room, doesn't become a coat rack, and uh, allows you to actually burn some calories and be active while sitting, even though you're watching a game or watching a movie. Hi, again, I'm Marco from Polar, uh, product director. And uh, this morning I focused a lot about uh, the uh, consumer side of the Polar business, but in the context of the fitness clubs, uh, I could focus on uh, key, key things there are that what we do is we work with clubs in terms of fitness assessment technology and also group exercise uh, equipment that we uh, provide with, uh, to club owners. And also thirdly, we, uh, we work with um, uh, OEM uh, on an OEM basis with fitness club equipment manufacturers. Pretty well all the top global fitness club equipment manufacturers are integrating some kind of polar into their devices. So um, uh, in terms of heart rate receiving technology. And uh, in addition to that, we're working very closely with personal trainers and coaches around the world. And I want to make sure that these folks understand how your products work. So uh, while I want to get into kind of more of the marketing and sales of it, I do want to make sure that we talk about what are, what are the benefits of the user? Like, how are they using your product? What kind of data are they getting? And, and um, what, what can they do with that information? So anybody can start us off and just kind of break it down a little more. What is the actual product itself? Well. For example, at the Polar products, I mean, where there are smart coaching devices that people wear, and it's, it's not, a, the device is just actually one element of an overall system. So everything integrates into the Polar Flow web service, and uh, in that context, it gives you an ability to get an overview as to what you're achieving all the time, and also gives you value-added feedback as to where you're succeeding, what the benefits are of every, every, every single training session, this type of a thing. Uh, so that's on the consumer side. For the club owner, uh, thinking about the, the group exercise systems, like for example, the um, uh, Polar uh, group exercise app, what it does is it allows the fitness club, uh, the, the, the trainer, the group exercise, uh, the spinning teacher or such, to be able to lead the whole, the whole t uh, group all at the same time. And everybody in the club can see the, the actual heart rate data and the calories that you know, are in that session. And uh, it, it allows that customer to get like a really personalized solution, but it also allows for a great group dynamic in that, in that group exercise training situation. So, mm -hmm. uh, and we're just l launching a new generation of that. We've had one system out already that Orange Theory, for example, has implemented pretty broadly around the US. And now uh, we're moving towards the next generation system, which is iPad-based, much lighter solution. Great. So, so with Life Fitness, for those that are unfamiliar, we, we're a manufacturer. So we make treadmills, bikes, cross trainers, things like that. And, and our business is selling into the health club or the commercial space primarily. Um, so while we're focused on making sure that the facility is buying the right product to meet the needs of our exercisers, we're also focused on enhancing the exerciser experience. So our products will output data, speed, distance, time, calories, heart rate, um, and, and we're trying to make that data more meaningful to the exerciser. So with that data, historically, it's been very close that Life Fitness, we would kind of own that and we would monitor it and 
Now, you know, a couple of years ago, we had this, this revelation, and you would think it's kind of crazy, but we, we kind of opened it up because we saw the bigger picture. We saw the grander vision that data is much more meaningful to the exerciser and what the exerciser could do with that data and how they could share that with their healthcare provider or their personal trainer or whoever it might be to turn that into something that's gonna keep them coming back into the gym or keep them working out or very simply just get them up and moving. Um, so that's kind of what we're trying to transform our company into. We've, we've been around for over 40 years kind of leading it and, and over that time we're seeing the, the industry change and we wanna make sure that we're evolving and adapting with the industry. Uh, well, I can uh, show you here, uh, but we have a mobile exercise device, so you actually exercise with it. It's all based on isometric principles, like uh, kind of a yoga strength and stretch kind of stuff. So you can exercise all over your body. Um, specifically good if you're trapped on a plane or something. I know a lot of you flew here, and they don't even let you get up these days. You can keep the blood moving, and it, act, it uh, connects to your uh, mobile app via Bluetooth and coaches you through the exercises and tells you when to rest and how long, things like that. And with our chair, it's the same concept. You're sitting in the chair, and the, the steel arms, you can pull them and push them with your legs and your arms, and there's a screen on the chair that gives you a calorie readout. So it, this is a, a, a portable gym in your pocket, if you will, and the other one is sort of a as I said, invisible gym for your living room. But I, the way that um, uh, trainers and uh, gyms are interested in using it is to stay connected to the people uh, while they're not at the gym, things like that. So Technic Gym, we're based out of Chisane, Italy. If you look at the, on the screen there, it really shows along the ecosystem up there. So just like Life Fitness, we're a manufacturer of fitness equipment, and we, do also, we focus on the end user. Uh, really what they're doing. Uh, but what we did is, over 15 years ago, we thought to ourselves, let's create a solution for the gyms. So we created our first solution called the wellness system. Um, and that was a way that we could actually begin to start to prescribe exercise. So we're actually having the personal trainers be able to prescribe exercise. You know, and, and really only seven to eight percent of people use personal trainers. So we thought, well, how can we enhance this now? And so what we've done is gone into more of a coaching model, personal training model, and we've put everything up in the cloud. And then we've integrated with third-party devices. We work a lot with Polar. I saw Runtastic up here, like their apps, as well as Polar, the Garmin, I think I got on my wrist. Uh, so in that way, we can cycle all the data, really to make it meaningful. Because end users, we have all this data, and we don't know what to do with it. So we really push it out there for the professionals to be able to help out. All right, and that's a great lead into the next line of question that I want to ask is, you know, how is selling into health clubs and into and to personal trainers different from selling to end consumers? Obviously, they have different needs. They have, you know, different value expectations. So talk me through, you know, what are, what are the, how do, you, how do you do that? How do you explain what the value proposition is on that side of the business? <laughs> well, I think from a selling to a health club uh, manufacturer, I think it's really about a long-term partnership and really helping to, trying to very much to understand what that health club uh, uh, chain or, or uh, health club uh, wants to achieve with their customer. What is their concept? And then thinking about how we can best support that for the long term. That's really our, our main point. Obviously, with the, with the end consumers, we all, there too also want a long-term uh, relationship, but it's on, a, it's on a slightly different cycle, different, different wave. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think on, on the side, your consumers, we just go out, we pick out anything, we look on the shelf and we grab it, and it's something cool and fun, and we use it. <clears throat> but for the operator, it's gotta be something that really generates brand loyalty to you. So we really look and try to push it out there for something that creates value for the gyms and the personal trainers. And, and really in a gym, it's all about memberships and keeping that. And so what we like to do is create a system that allows them to knock down the four walls of their facility and go really beyond that and be able to access people outside of that to create that loyalty so a person feels like they're part of the gym even if they're not at the gym. Mm -hmm. And that's one of our goals. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, and I just add to that what, what Perry said is, uh, so in the commercial space, 
Life Fitness, we take a very consultative approach to, to the sales process and go in and really assess the needs and do that needs-based uh, value assessment with them to really understand what are, what are their drivers, what are their key uh, pain points that we're trying to overcome and achieve. And if we can do that with our products because of the technology that we're building into those products, you know, that's a win for us. And like you said, building those long-term relationships and partnerships is really key. Um, but we also want to listen to what the exerciser is saying and understand what do they want? What are they bringing into the gym, whether it's working out at their home or working out into the gym? Are they wearing a polar strap? Are they, you know, wearing, um, like Sensoria's debut, the socks and, and the different heart rate monitors? And understand what is technology doing for them and how are they changing that? Uh, and making sure that we're listening on the back end to adapt our products to meet the, those needs. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that I, I've experienced in working with health clubs is that, well, two things, actually. One is that um, health clubs and personal trainers are n maybe not as um, uh, technologically savvy as, as the people here in this room and um, are maybe not used to the uh, fast product cycles and the short lead times and lots of the changes that are going on. Um, the other thing is, is, I think, something that Perry spoke about is that they tend to think about either, you know, the... the the client that they're working with or the four walls of their um, of their gym as opposed to really thinking about kind of this whole connected experience. How do you get them, how do you, you know, speak into their world that is maybe very different from our world? Yeah, I, I think it's, uh, for us in the commercial space, it's really just breaking things down to the simplest level. You know, it wasn't until 2012 that our products started to be able to be connected to the internet. And you're going into a commercial gym, think of a, a Gold's Gym, for example, where they're used to buying steel, yes. you know, buying strength equipment. <laughs> and their concern is, I want to get big and bulky. And they didn't really care about the internet. And they weren't even set up to have Wi-Fi. And you talked about Wi-Fi, it's like, what, what, is, what are you talking about? Um, so, so for us, we kind of break it down into simple terms, especially with our cardio equipment, that now you could push a software update to it. And think about you know, your phone or your computer. If, what if you didn't update your apps? What if you never took a software update on your computer? That would be completely outdated. And that's really no different than the fitness products that we're manufacturing now, that if you don't update to the latest and greatest operating system that we're providing you for, for free, you're gonna be missing out on some really great features and technology. And you don't have to worry about the technology aspect of it, of how things are evolving. Let us worry about that, and you just take that software update and, and make your members happy and allow it to integrate with their solutions. So let's see, 20, it's 2015, right? So 28 years ago, when I got my first personal training certificate, and uh, I wrote, I had a piece of paper, and I wrote a lot of notes, and I put little cards in a file. And guess what? 20 years later, I go into a lot of places, and they write Same little thing. things on note cards, and then they put them into <laughs> a file. And why? Part of it is getting past the trainer mentality that these things are tools for them to enhance their business, not competitive to them. It's something that really allows them to enhance their business model, mm -hmm. not take away from it. Personal trainers, I, I know because I know well, myself, I, it's mine, 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 mine. My client is mine, mine, mine. You know, but then you're stuck. It's only one person, one. You know, if you really want to gain, and if we want to attack that 82%, we've got to clear our minds of that and use the tools around us. And so that's kind of what our thought process is, you know, with all the connected equipment, with all the connected devices, is really create a format here that allows people to grow and augment their business. Right. Philo, I, I'm curious as to, you probably experienced that as well, where people might view your technology as competition as opposed to an extension of what they're doing. What the trainers are interested in doing, and we set up an API and a, and a system so that they can customize the app by either choosing uh, our own exercises and making favorites uh, or making their own. And in that way, they can have their clients outside of you know the personal connection still keep up training specifically it's all core based training uh, so that they and they can get data back that their clients have been compliant and and have done the exercises and they can actually see how much pressure they've exerted and how many how many reps they've done and so that's what the uh, the trainers are interested we also have uh, in our app um, a 3D program where you can see the exercise as a 3D model. So you can spin it around and look at it to make sure your posture is correct and things like that. And they really enjoy that. Great. 
Would you like to add? Yeah, I, 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 would, I would pile on. In terms of that comment that personal trainers are, are still following in, in that sense, I think I see a lot of end consumers that are really understanding how to get the most out of their fitness device along with the web service and flow, the actual mobile apps. But the, that's where we're working really hard now with the Flow app and Flow for Coach to really be able to help the personal trainers have a tool to allow them to scale their business. So they don't have to send an email every time to a client and say, okay, this is what you need to do next week. So we can really make it much more efficient and they can just get the information on a more, much more real-time basis. And same goes for the group app. To be able to have all that data or like all the heart rate data projected on the back screen of the studio and then to be able to get that group dynamic, you don't have to scream so much while you're on the bike and because you know, the, the app is helping you, it's supporting you to create that group enthusiasm. Every time that, that team burns a thousand calories together, bang, you know, the thing lights up. You know, it's, it's a gamification type of aspect and that's really where, where we just can build a lot more enthusiasm and stickiness to get people going back to the clubs and working closer with the personal trainers and, and uh, exercise leaders. Yeah, so, so let me ask a little bit more about that. And, and again, this will be kind of your advanced warning. If you have questions, I'll, I'll turn to you all in the audience in just a moment. But um, so we're in this period of the year, right after January 1st, where everyone's working diligently on their New Year's resolutions to get fit. And, and I'm sure um, health club participation and personal training is, is at an all-time high right now. Um, and then we typically see the drop off probably in three weeks or so. Um, how do your products and solutions help address this problem and um, create longer term engagement, longer term commitments to a healthier lifestyle? Well, that's kind of our, our metier. And it is, you know, people want to be healthier. That's why they're joining the gym in January. But they're busy too. If you have a couple kids and you drive an hour to work, it's hard to carve out a, a, an hour to go to the gym, see your trainer. And that's what uh, you know, we're all about so that you can actually get exercise in even if you have only a few minutes. And you know, we're not trying to compete with health clubs, we're trying to augment them. We would love people to get more time to go to the gym. We want them to go running and cycling and, and swimming too they're not doing it. And uh, so this is a way for mobile outreach and for, you know, if you have a few minutes, you can get a set of reps in and, and to stay healthy and, and really combat the uh, ill effects of sitting, which uh, unfortunately we do too much of. Yeah, I'd say with Life Fitness products, whether you're at home or uh, can make it to a gym and have a membership, um, what we're trying to create with our console solutions, I'll speak specifically with, with cardio products, is building those engaging solutions to keep them motivated. To make that 30 minutes or 45 minutes on a product go by as fast as it possibly can go, right? Um, so some of the things that, that we're doing is gone, you know, gone are the days of the LED lights that you see kind of going up and up and up. You know, and building <laughs> engaging solutions like virtual reality courses that you can get immersed in. So you're going up and down terrains and you see yourself going through an environment and what our products are doing are actually reacting to those changes. So as you're going up an incline, the treadmill will automatically go up on that incline with you. As you speed up, the frame rate of the video will speed up with you. So those are just some little things that will keep someone engaged. And because we offer a wide variety of different courses embedded in our product, or because we have this open um, LF open philosophy where third parties could build solutions, if someone has, let's say, a favorite course on their iPad or their phone or Android device, you could come in, connect those devices to our product, and now you have your personal content that you could be interacting and engaging with. Great. Well, I, I, think, uh, yeah, I, I think that's really what's become the industry standard. What's, what's really amazing in our industry is that we, we see what's going on, and then we all kind of emulate each other. So <clears throat> exactly what we're doing, we do other people do. Um, so we try to take it like one step beyond it that, you know, um, well, your initial thing was, how do we keep them after this couple weeks yes. go by? Um, my dad's 83. He just had open heart surgery. He's got to take his blood pressure every day, right? He's just begun fitness. He's gone, sorry, now he's out of the thing. Now he's doing his rehab. So he's starting to do his exercise, but he has to take his blood pressure every day. 
So what we've done is not only the exercise, but keeping the biometrical information, I monitor my dad's information. He's in Chicago, I'm in New Jersey, and I monitor his information and remind him, and we have push notifications to remind him, dad, That's take your blood pressure. So we're doing this so they don't have to be in there. It's kind of a push, kind mm -hmm. of a grab. You know, it's not just, hey, they're in the gym. Well, we'll let them, we'll give them a phone call or an email in a week, in a month. You know, so it's more interact, more proactive. Um, and then really on the gamification side, what we've done is we've created this thing called Let's Move for a Better World. And, and what we've really done, this is actually a social cause. We're actually fighting childhood obesity. It's a childhood obesity awareness. We run during the month of March. It's a global campaign. Uh, last year, we had nearly 200 facilities in 10 different countries competing against each other. And what they do is people come in, they get on our connected cardio, they log in, and they get their moves. We had firemen in full gear running on treadmills. It was actually kind of, it went viral on YouTube. It was kind of fun to watch them go. You know, we had people tweeting and yelling and screaming at each other on Facebook, competing and fighting this out and battling to get the top prize. And what we do is we award a school of their choice um, fitness equipment, and then we give them the educational and training behind it. But I think beyond that, it's, it's really about social awareness. It's developing a lifestyle from the ground up, uh, working with kids, um, and then hopefully we're going to get more of those 82%. Great. Um, so, oh, did, did you want to say I was just going to say two things. Okay, two things. Results, obviously. If people are actually making progress, that's incredibly motivating to stay, stick with it mm -hmm. beyond January yes. and just to get that momentum going. And uh, the other thing is switching it up to, to be able to train indoors in the club environment. And I think the, the, you know, the more progressive clubs are also recognizing that, hey, a lot of people want to train outdoors and be opportunistic when the weather is great. Like, look, why not go skiing? Why not go like cycling, whatever, this type of a thing. And recognize that as part of the bigger picture and not that, hey, it's just all about the time that's been inside this club. Right, right. All right, I, I, um, what questions do you all have for this great panel? Yes, sir. I didn't mean to slam you earlier. I hope you didn't take, okay, all right. <laughs> I find it difficult to buy equipment with uh, the integrated equipment because you guys don't talk to each other. So if I want to have life fitness, I have to go to life fitness site. If I want to have uh, physical fitness, I have to go to the gym. So I'm just wondering if you have any advice for people who want to go to the gym and have to make it easy for us to go to one place to find all the data. Our members don't want to go to five different places or six different sites to track themselves. One thing, one thing we've been working on for a very long time, and we consider it an incredibly a, a key thing to be able to move the industry forward, is to get the fitness equipment profile for Bluetooth uh, implemented. And that way we'll have a common language, a, 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 a way to be able to have connectivity that's consistent between devices. I think that's, that's, that's one step along this pathway. There's others as well in terms of data synchronization and things like that. And there are steps being made with different APIs, but, but I just wanted to speak to that Bluetooth thing because um, I think that'll, that'll help the industry a great deal. This mic is not working, is that, I think? Okay, so. <laughs> um, I, you know, I'd like to, so we've been working on that solution. So we've, if actually, if you go to the Samsung booth, uh, you'll see one of our bikes working on a Samsung app that's integrated, pulling information from our cloud. So just like Life Fitness, we've got an open API. Uh, so we're able to work with other vendors. Um, you know, obviously, if it's Techno Gym, it's going to be a more integrative, more, uh, more. Uh, I don't know. It's a slightly better experience. We're able to push the prescription out there, but we're able to collect data off of other manufacturers' equipment, either manually or through like QR scanning and things like that. So. I think as a manufacturers, we're, we're kind of coming together. I was just on a panel like two months ago talking to Matrix and sitting with the product managers and we're all thinking about the same thing, about collecting each other's data and trying to make it a better, uh, better marketplace to play with. Yeah, absolutely. You know, same, same thing with Perry said. It's really about everyone getting together and, and I think when we made the first strides a couple of years ago to kind of open up that uh, technology and the APIs, that was really a strategic decision that we made. And, 
you know, it was something that took a long time to get to, and I think now that we got there and other manufacturers are, are starting to share the similar visions that, that, that we had, I think it's, it's probably not too far away that, that you might start seeing some of those solutions. And like you said, you could see it on display here in different booths and with Samsung and Mio and Sensoria, you know, Technogym products are in some booths as well, like ours, and, and you can kind of see those things starting to happen. Um, so I think the technology is allowing us to get there much more quickly than we ever thought possible before. We have time for one more question. There, Julie, behind oh, you. Oh, I got one. I thought I should push that one. Hi, I have a question to um, Technogym. Um, what do you think is the biggest benefit for a trainer um, that you give them with your technology? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, you know, we've created, uh, one of our newest things we've done is we have an iPad app, uh, a, a personal trainer's app. Um, so what you can do is literally hand out exercise prescription, collect biometrical information on them. They can use different third parties. They can have a polar a uh, heart rate strap, Bluetooth on our equipment, or they could have a Fitbit watch, or whatever they want, and you can collect all that information. And, and really, the benefit for the personal trainer is you're able to do a much more holistic approach to their health and wellness uh, than before. Um, you know, you can hand out exercise prescription, you know, and it makes them feel, they may only be paying for, I don't know, three one-hour sessions, but really, when they look at it, <clears throat> They're 24 seven with you uh, and they're communicating and you're coaching them and you're really working through to create that lifestyle change. Um, so being able to do that outside of the time when you're just face to face with them, I think is one of the biggest benefits. All right, well, I'm gonna thank my panelists. Um, please join me in just thanking them for sharing their experience. Oh, yes, oh, sorry, Perry, I just wanna thing. make one quick announcement. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. so, in the light of this, what we did is we created, we have an innovation lab now. We've just begun an innovation lab. Um, it's for inventors, startups, health and wellness, fitness apps. Uh, you've got something, you're thinking about it. This innovations lab is something we've developed and we want to connect. We want to connect with everyone. Um, and our person out there, our, uh, Claudio, can you raise your hand? Claudio is our uh, contact for the innovations lab. So if you've got a new great thought, uh, please contact Claudio. Okay, any other final words? I don't mean to cut anyone off. Okay, thank you very much for your participation.